let us suppose that I'm the patient and you are the students and the doctors. And I suffer from what you would call the delusion that I'm God. And therefore, you might want to do something about me or with me or humor me or ask me questions. And so I'm perfectly willing to submit to your examination and your treatment and uh, invite you to help yourselves. When did you become God? Now. Will you marry me? No. God, uh, can you sleep on your stomach or your back? <laughs> Sleeping is like politics. One sleeps on the right side, and then when you're tired of that, you sleep on the left. <laughs> when you're tired of that, you sleep on your back, and when you're tired of that, you sleep on your stomach. And it is thus that the world goes round. If you were God now, what were you yesterday? Now. How did you become God? You don't become God. Am I also God? Yes. Are we then the same person? No. Remember three persons but one God. <laughs> God, could you tell us a little about Satan? Could I tell you a little bit about Satan? Yes. Uh, although the matter is a little esoteric, but uh, I told you all about it in the book of Job where you will see that in the court of heaven, Satan is the district attorney. He is not, as Christians imagine, the enemy of heaven and the enemy of mankind. He's merely the person who sees the bad side of things and carries out the dirty work. And therefore, he saw Job and wondered whether Job really was as great a guy as he seemed to be and suggested that God should appoint a committee of investigation to find out. And the committee did its work very thoroughly but the case went against Satan because it was proved in the end that Job was an honorable man. Now you notice that although we pay the salary of the district attorney, whenever there's a great criminal case before the public eye, people begin to take the side of the underdog. And the prosecutor always has less public sympathy than the defense, except in political trials. On the right hand of God, and you know the defense is always on the right hand of the judge in court, is our only mediator and advocate, which is the phrase referring to Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is the defense and there is the prosecution, and it is the function of Satan to be the prosecutor. There is a good deal more to it than that, because before all this started, as in a stage play, there was an arrangement in the green room before coming on stage <laughs> in which uh, certain things were understood but that are only to be revealed uh, when the curtain goes down at the end of the play. Is Job God too? Yes, but he doesn't know it. God, why do you hide from the sight of so many? Why do you hide? It's for the same reason you're hiding. God, you the... <coughs> yes. <coughs> Man has free will to the extent that he knows who he is. Not otherwise. Where did get free will from? Where I got it from. Yes. To the extent that she knows who she is, yes. If man has free will to know just what he is, and man is God, then you're saying, then you'd say that you are no more than any God in this room, or any man. That is correct. I'm no more God than any of you. Then you only have the power to know who you are. Well, that is uh, saying quite a bit, yes. <laughs> what is not God? What is not God? There is nothing that is not God. How do you learn who you are? It's like waking up from a dream. After a while, one's experience begins to have what I would call a haven't we been here before feeling. Going round and round and round. And then you begin wondering, where am I going? And to answer that question, you have to try and find out what you want. And so I went into that very thoroughly. What do I want to happen? And, of course, as soon as you ask yourself that, you begin to fantasize. 
and our amazing technology is of course an expression of human desire, desire for power, for what we want to achieve. So I simply set myself to thinking through how far we could go. And so I soon found myself at a great push-button place where I had a fantastic mechanism with buttons available for every conceivable thing I could wish. So I spent quite a bit of time playing with those. And science fiction wasn't in it. <laughs> you know, you go going like that and here is Cleopatra. And so on, you know, and then press this button, a symphonic music in a, in a four channel sound, a 16 channel sound, anything, you know, the, all possible pleasures are available. And when, you know, you're like everybody's dream of the sultan in the palace, you suddenly notice there's a button labeled surprise. <laughs> you push that. And here we are. <laughs> boredom a problem. Yes, boredom is of course the problem. Uh, boredom is, is the other side of creativity. And the energy of creation has as its, that is the yang, the yin side of that energy is called boredom. Everything, of course, is fundamentally yang and yin. If you understand that, you really don't need to understand anything else. As God, what responsibility do you feel to ameliorate evil in the world? As God, what responsibility do I feel to ameliorate evil in the world? I begin with the point that I am responsible for the way the world is. If I couldn't feel that, I'd have to blame somebody else. I'm not willing to do that because I know that under various changing circumstances it might be appropriate for me to be as big a rascal as rascals have been. Now as to improving the world, the world is always improving. It may look to some people slow, but it's improving even when it is declining because the world works in an undulatory process like a wave. It goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. And it couldn't go up all the time because if it did, we wouldn't know that that was up. We are all God. Yes. What of the hereafter? Is there a heaven? Is there a purgatory? Is there a hell? The hereafter is of course now. Because if you will examine it closely, there is no when else than now. And if you want to make hell of it, you can make hell of it. If you want to make heaven of it, you can make heaven of it. Purgatory, purgatory. It's all here. Always was, always will be. Death. What is death? Death is an undulation in consciousness. How would you know you were alive unless you had once been dead? Yes. <laughs> Your God, why was it unnecessary for him to have material possessions and necessary for you? It wasn't unnecessary for him to have material possessions. They said of St. John the Baptist that he was an ascetic, but of Jesus. This man consorts with gluttoners and wine-bibbers and comes eating and drinking. And when uh, the lady Mary poured precious ointment on his feet and anointed him, they said the same thing that the members of the vestry say to the minister today. Why this great expense? Couldn't it all have been sold for much money and given to the poor? But it's a problem. <laughs> it is a problem, sure. But you see, uh, in many ways, when you get down to these very deep ethical problems, where there sure is no easy decision one way or, or the other, you, you must look in the, at the problem from the point of view of an artist. Which way of doing this is in some sense greater? It may be better to go off with a bang than with a whimper.